Hey guys, it's Chris. How you doing? I finally, I finally worked up the nerve to start back on this pyramid series, even though I really, really don't want to. Um, I have to finish it out um, in between my other teachings. Now, this video is going to be about the giants of the Old Testament, these demonically empowered beings that you see in movies and all these different other uh, forms of media today. You have all these other creatures, you have the movie Cone Heads, where it's depicted in like Egypt where they had the big, the big cone head. Now, no doubt Satan is conditioning us to receive some kind of beings that are not what we are used to. Some kind of extra dimensional beings. Demonically empowered beings. Now some people will call these uh, beings Nephilim. I believe in the Bible that they could have been referring to fallen angels or giants. Because Nephilim means the fallen ones. So it's very, it's very possible they use the term Nephilim to refer to the giants because they knew they were empowered by the fallen angels. Okay? But the fallen angels are called the sons of God, and no flesh can approach the throne like Satan and his angels, which are the sons of God that approach the throne in Job. Okay? Now the Bible definitely calls the giants the Rephaim. And, the, uh, and there's other names the, the, in the Old Testament they use to describe the giants. And they all end in IMS. Like Rephaims and Nephilims, anything like that. That's all referring to giant men. Now some people have come up with the idea that these giant beings are actually just demons that took the form of giant humans. However, this is refuted in the book of Samuel, where David cut off Goliath's head. If David could cut off Goliath's head and hack it off, that was not a demon, all right, putting up a delusion. That was actually uh, an odd being. That was a being that we don't see today. We, we see demons. We could do deliverance. We could speak with the spirits in the, in the second heaven. We see human beings, but we don't see these giants today. Now, I believe these giants exist today in places under the earth, okay, and that are, they're hidden away. And I believe that they sit on top of the humans that have been heavily demonized. Now, I've never seen one. But this is my belief. But what this video is about is, why are there no giants anymore? And the only way to describe this is, God does not want there to be giants anymore right now. And he didn't want giants in the beginning. You see, the giants started to thrive in the days of Noah. The Bible says in the end days it will be like in the days of Noah. So, what happens is, God gives Satan a lot of leeway to pervert things just so God could crush Satan no matter how far things go. And he waits till the last minute. He does it to glorify himself. So for instance, God allowed there to be giant men like Goliath, like the giants in the Philistine, that were the Philistines. Okay, Some of the Philistines were giants when David slew them. Okay, and he allowed all these other men to become giants just so he could show that his servants will overcome them just by being his servants. That his power is not in carnal means, but it's in spiritual means, right? You see, David had supernatural fearlessness when he went up against Goliath. David had supernatural ability to throw a stone at his head and knock him out. He knew, because God was behind him, he could overcome these things. 
And because of his faith and his obedience to God, he was empowered to overcome these things. And the children of God that follow God today in the end days, when the demons come into the natural, you see, I believe the demons will come into the natural at the end. You will see them. They will manifest right into this realm. God will merge the realms. It will be a nightmare. People's hearts will fail them with fear. And I know what that's like. Trust me. My heart has almost failed me with fear many times when Satan was attacking me. But now, when I see these things, I don't even care. I sleep like a baby when these things go on in my life. Because I'm supernaturally empowered by God. And this is what every child of God, the kind of power they're going to have. This is why Satan's trying to limit this power now. He's trying to draw you away from the Word, draw you away from God now. So in the end days, there's very few of us. And this is the preparation he prepares for with these uh, death camps and these FEMA camps. He's not preparing FEMA camps for the world. He's preparing it for the believers. You're of no value to Satan if you're dead already. If you don't have Christ, you're dead already. He's got you. He doesn't need to worry about you. They're going to name Christians lunatics. They're going to name Christians anarchists and attackers of their New Age religion. And they're going to lock us up. But aside from this, you guys need to realize, people like uh, Obama, the Bushes, all these other people, these people are flesh and blood. Yes, is their bloodline tainted by Satan? Is that the serpent's seed line? Yeah. But they started off as God's children. Do you understand? If you track it far back enough, it all goes to Adam and Eve. Alright? Now, do I believe there's giants that sit over the Bushes, the Rockefellers, Henry Kissinger, and all these other idiots? Absolutely. I believe, you know like in the, in the show True Blood, they show everybody going down underground and the vampires are controlling the U.S. government. regime now. Lilith has guided us to our rightful place and there we shall lead all vampire kind. I would advise you to be um, careful about what words you choose next. It's all demons, okay? Even if there's giants and all this masturbating and all this... I believe all the masturbating and all the people having sex with uh, spirits, they're able to produce Rephaim-type beings and Nephilim-type beings. Whether you want to call the Nephilim fallen angels or giants, either way. Whatever you want to call these giants, they existed. We can see that they really existed by the statues of them in Egypt and the comparison of a man this big standing next to a man that big. There was definitely imagery that made this clear that there were giant beings. 
There's definitely imagery that makes it clear that there were cone-headed like beings, okay? And I find it odd that the alien movement of today, the only thing they speak of is reptilian, serpent-like beings and cone-head-like gray alien type beings. Now, I've had demons tell me in the end days the gray aliens will be the giants and the reptilians will be the demons. Okay, and they're preparing you for these different types of creatures that have different authorities and powers with the New Age movement. But why did this fail? This failed back in the days of David and the, and the days of the giants because God wanted to stop this to spread out his people all over the world. He, this has been something, say, this has been the same old goal that Satan wanted then. He wants it now. He wants beings in the natural that he completely controls. Now, you could be a human and you could be not a giant, and Satan could completely control you. So just imagine how much he controls these beings that he's actually bred through spiritual sex with the angels falling into the sons of men. Okay? Because these symbols of the Freemasonry symbols and all the symbols of the V that you see, V Magazine, M Magazine, where Miley Cyrus is holding the M and, and the Beyonce has got the V under her and the Freemason compass and square, that's a symbol of the angels falling into the sons of men, intermingling. You see, Satan wants to pervert God's clean bloodline. This is why in the Bible, God made it such a big deal to say, this one begat this one, begat this one, begat this one. Because he wanted to let you know that this, it, it's probably the most important issue in the Bible, keeping that bloodline pure up to Jesus Christ. Do you understand? Once Jesus Christ came on the scene, Notice there's no desire to show you the bloodline stayed pure anymore. Because even a lowlife like Barack Obama or a Bush, they can come to Christ. This is why people like Kennedy are murdered. This is why people like Aaliyah and celebrities, their plane crashes. Okay? Because these are people that were trying to get away and turn over. Okay? And they were going against the grain of the music industry. So, not all of them. Some of them, it was just time to pay up on the contract they made. They sold their soul. And they said, up to the, the devil said, give me your soul at 50 and I'll make you rich. And it's time to pay up. Okay? But some of them try and get away. And once you get too many demons in you... I would say if I had one more demon in me than I had in me, I'd still be a child of Satan today. Because it was so brutal to come out of it, I was getting boils, hives, attacked, mauled, ripped to pieces. You see, when you try and defect from Satan's kingdom, it's so difficult, and you're going to be so afraid by the fear the demons are projecting into you, that you, it's too hard. You, you know, most of these people that were in the Illuminati, unless God specifically drew them out, they're still going to stay in there. You know, you, it, you literally need to be chosen by God to come out of something like that. You cannot do it without the power of God or a child of God praying for you, which is the power of God. Now, what's going on is this. When these giants come on the scene, there's going to be Christians that have power over these giants, just like in the days of old. Just like only more. There are going to be Christians that are going to wave their hand and these giants are going to go flying. And these demonic beings are going to go flying. Now, in the last days, these giants and all these human beings are going to be empowered by Satan. So whatever demons you have in you, when that, when that tribulation, when God snaps his fingers and says, let's time to roll, we're getting ready to burn this place, start the, start the havoc, start the torture, Satan is going to pour his power out through his pyramid system, and the people, and the military people, 
and the, the government people, the CIA, all these people that have been loaded through demons, through rituals and them swearing them in through Luciferian false oaths and all this stuff, These people are going to be demonically empowered drones, basically. Completely under the control of Lucifer. This is why if you're in the military now and you watch my videos, it better be your first priority to get out of the military. Because you're serving Lucifer if you're in the military. I don't care if you hand out potatoes in the military. I don't care if you work in the doctor's office, I don't care what you do. If you're any part of the U.S. military, if you're any part of the U.S. government, you're a child of Satan. You see, you can't be a police officer and stay a police officer if you are born of God. They will oust you. If you go in there and start preaching the truth of Jesus Christ or even discussing it, you can't even be a cop in a local town in the United States. I have never seen people so brainwashed, arrogant, prideful, and loaded with demons than law enforcement and military. Sometimes I fly on a plane and I see that all the soldiers getting on and off the planes and going where they're going. And now I love these people, but when I look at them, I'm like, these people are blind and stupid. I could tell just by looking at them. They're indoctrinated, they walk around with their chest puffed up, they don't even know what cause they're fighting for. Now, yes, is there the rare exception to this? Yes, and I'm talking to you people. The rare exception, you better get out of there. You better get out because you're serving Lucifer. And all the symbols you're wearing, and the little moon with the star, and the little eagle, and all the junk you're wearing, you're wearing his symbols all over your body. They're shooting you up with vaccines, they're destroying your life, and all I can say again is get out of there. Because I'll tell you what, I know people that were in the military, I've tried to deliver some of them. Some of them are so demonized I don't even have enough time to hack the demons out before Lucifer pulls them back into his kingdom. They can't bear the extraction. They can't, they can't, uh... They can't bear the extraction process of the demons coming out. It's, there's too many. It's too grueling. When I came out, when I defected from Satan's kingdom, from being a sinner, I went through maybe three months of torture between health problems, uh, spiritual attacks, mental. It felt like I was going insane. You see, they want you. They want to get you in a mental hospital. They want to knock you out of money, they want to weaken you, and they want to get you in a mental hospital if you know the truth. Today, if you know the truth, you're called a lunatic. Okay? That's the racket they have going. But aside from this, guys, just know that if you serve the Lord, that these giants will have no power over you in the last day. And don't, be, don't ever be afraid to die if you're a true Christian. The Bible says... Love not your life unto the death. Alright? So, basically, why were these giants there? They were there to glorify God. God let Satan thrive for his glory. Just like God let Nebuchadnezzar thrive for his glory. He let Nebuchadnezzar take all his stuff out of his temple. All his chair, his gold, everything. They, the Babylonians stole God's stuff out of the holy temple. And God allowed it because his people went against him. So he allowed his enemy to thrive over his people to teach his people a lesson. God is still this way today. He will let his enemies crush you to smithereens if you're his child to bring you in line so you could be his child, if that makes any sense. If you think I'm crazy, read your Bible. Do you think he let Moses and the Jews go through the ocean and, and made it, timed it perfect, that he, he let Pharaoh proceed all the way to the Red Sea just so he could split it. 
He could have crushed Pharaoh back in Egypt, yet he let Pharaoh go there. Why? To glorify him. So, he, so that his people could see the faces of his enemies on the other side of that ocean in fear when that ocean went like this. And he could let his people see Pharaoh go into the middle of that ocean and let, him, let the waters cave in on them. And he will do the same in the end days and on the other side of life in the heavenlies when Jesus comes back and we all go where we're going. He will glorify his children a thousandfold greater than what he did at the Red Sea at the great white throne judgment when these, when these sinners and these demons are escorted before the Lord and the saints. Okay? So that's why these giants existed. Don't be afraid of them. They likely are coming back. And if they're not coming back, be prepared for the people, the, the satanic bloodlines, the human beings that he's got tons of demons in that have sold their soul. If, if giants aren't in the last days, they will be normal sized. Because Satan doesn't even need giants anymore. The cone-headed beings could be six foot tall, seven foot tall, and the reptilian beings could be regular size, and they could be any size. I don't know what size they're going to be. And anybody that says that they do know is a liar, because God is keeping that secret. Nobody's going to ruin God's wrath on the world. God controls Satan. Satan is God's dog. Satan can't do anything unless God allows it for his own pleasure. You know, but you see, Satan, Satan knows he's bound by God, but Satan still at the same time is so proud that he thinks that through his maneuvering, he can overcome God. Because God supernaturally put pride into him. Because pride is misery. God changes the heart. You see, the devil has pride, and the devil thinks he should be God, all while he has to approach the throne like a dog and ask, the God, ask God what he's allowed to do. Okay? And if Satan does one thing here outside of God's will, he gets crushed. And it, 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 he gets crushed so quick that he really can't do anything outside of God's will. You see, God and his angels don't control him like a puppet. They police him like animals, though. That's the difference. You see, Satan pulls the strings of his people. He uses them. God polices his people. He doesn't pull strings. He stands on the outside and blocks and blocks and blocks. It's a totally different procedure. But he's so much higher, it's almost the same. See, God is almost a string puller by his sovereign authority, all at the same time as him not being a string puller. Now, you people who are afraid of Satan, always remember, you should be twice as afraid, no, a hundred times more afraid of God and His Son Jesus than Satan. Because you're afraid of the guy that has to listen to my God if you're afraid of the devil. So, be blessed in Jesus' name, and have a good day.